I'm coming to the party with the squad dick Yeah, I'm gonna turn the whole joint to a mosh pit Shit getting better, working, gotta get the cheddar Zooming so fast on my way up, move yeah. like LeBron with the layup Stack all the racks, get the cake up, yeah Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the 5W's Interview Show. My name is Reese Zetter, I am your host, and today we are joined by a new, very special guest. We're actually just super hyped on this. Uh, we're shooting a music video tomorrow for this dude's track, uh, Move Aside. Uh, absolutely amazing track from an absolutely amazing album, uh, a Beach Town Icon. This man, uh, White Russian SK, straight out of Beach Town, aka White Rock, BC, uh, repping the, rep the coast. Uh, SK, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so much for having me on the show, man. Honestly, it means a lot. No worries, man. It's my pleasure. I've been I'm not gonna lie to anyone in this audience. Uh, out of every local dog here, like I, I like this dude is better than quite a few of them. Like he's like dude, he's like a lot, man. bringing Honestly, hard so bars. Like I don't like the production. The amount of like the quality of production of your shit is just like. It's on another level compared to a lot of like the guys that are doing it around here, and uh, I feel like you're s somewhat underrated for where you like as far as the local scene <laughs> yeah, goes. I feel, sound, like, I feel like I feel like everyone's talking. Like, yeah, about I noticed people. like people like compare like with people in the city. I would say like people compare to like you know, like Ankle God and like Boslin kind of level like that type of like that type of sound wise. Yeah. But like, yeah, honestly, in the production, you, you got a shout out to Kyrus Jordan and uh, NK Tracks, man. They, honestly, without those two, bro, like the album wouldn't be as you know beautifully sounded like how it is. Like Kieran, he, he Kyrus Jordan, he he's part of Rogue Regime. He mixed literally every song, and then uh, they both split the production in half. They did half and half, and then there was one joint with uh, Nino as well from Vancouver. Shout out to Nino. He's yeah, making that, waves that too with the song is, Nobody. I, I oh, gotta that check that out too. No okay. cap. Yeah. Awesome. Well, without further ado, uh, we're on a bit of a time crunch. We're just going to run into our first question, the five W's, which is our who. And uh, SK, I just want to know, who else is in the SK slash Soup Kitchen Sauce Kings gang? So, yeah. So, yeah, Soup Kitchen was like the, the, it was like the inside joke of it. Now it's Sauce Kitchen with music. But, like, as artists, like, uh, Eli Burns, he's associated. He's kind of like half and half. He's doing his whole thing uh, with they called Forty Seven Four Seven as well. So he has his own imprint that he's uh, he's growing as well. But for SK artists, it's uh, basically just HK the Last, Strawby, and then I got this new guy, new guy from Toronto that uh, his name is Tristan, but he goes by Six Trades. He's gonna be doing some uh, some drill shit. You know? Oh, maybe, sick! So maybe like the Toronto Pop Smoke. Y'all gotta watch out tight. for that too. No cap, but uh, besides that, and then I have like my whole group, my, my main group, you know, shout out Mac, shout out Aiden, shout out Saba, Dan, all, all the cool group, you know, Henry, yeah. you know, everybody, Ricky, you know, we got, we have, we have the whole group, you know, they've been, they've been all supportive ever since day one, right? Most of those guys wanted to rap too, but then, you know, they found, they found out, you know, it's not, it's not as easy as it seems, <laughs> you know, so. And like, but they always knew, you know, I was always like the one that was going to, you know, me and Eli, especially because, you know, speaking of Eli Burns, we had this dream together like from the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got to get, got to give him homage where it, where, it, where it's due, you know, but yeah, we all kind of, you know, work as a group. We're a very good, you know, collective group, uh, especially the guy I mentioned, uh, Mac, he's, you know, he's going to jump on the art side of things because, yeah. uh, by the way, I'm going to have some merch coming. Tight. You know, because of like COVID, everything's kind of been like a little, you know, a little delayed. Like we got the one video and, you know, COVID's kind of been crazy. So it's kind of hard doing that type of stuff right now. But, you know, more stuff like, I mean, Beach Town Icon kind of has a project where it's, it would last. It's not like something that, you know, it's just cool in June 2020. Like that shit, I made yeah. that shit so it could last a year, you know, it could last like a, like a chapter, you know. For sure. That thing's going to last. For Especially a with this new video that's going to come out, man. People are going to notice that. For sure. So it's it's neat to hear that you kind of got like because you haven't really talked about that openly much about what SK Gang slash Sauce Kings really is. So is it, is it kind of like a pseudo label or just rap group or? Uh, it's like, it's, yeah, it's kind of like my 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 like basically like my label kind of, and mm -hmm. it's just like my group of friends that I've kind of that I've kept together ever since high school. It's just you know it's just the gang. It's the group. You know, it's the gang. That's tight. That's yeah. tight. Yeah, we're, we're you. you know it's. Thicker than blow with those guys, honestly. Sick. 
Awesome. Well, uh, we're just going to fly straight on into our second question of the five W's, which is our what. And I know you uh, you got some taste for fashion. Uh, I got yeah. a taste for fashion. I'm, yes, I, I got, yeah, no, I see your room. I see the hoodies in the back. The yeah, jacket. I got all my thrift fits up there. And uh, I don't get to talk about fashion enough with people. So uh, for the second question, which is our what, is what is it about designer pieces that you like so much? Personally, like, I don't know, like, my, my so I'll, I'll tell you about, you know, a little bit about, you know, my dad. So my dad, he, he does, like, all, like, the custom, like, uh, like, furniture and, like, he does, like, the wall panels. Like, you know, if you ever see, like, you know, like, uh, fabric on wall, pa- on wall panels and stuff. Yeah. Like, he does, like, a lot of high-end homes with, like, their furniture and stuff. So he always kind of got me into, like, you know, fabrics and stuff. stuff like, show me fabrics, different leathers at, like, at a young age. So I, I feel like, you know, that that's him you know to think about yeah. that because you know he kind of got me into that and then i would i'll go thrifting with friends and obviously you know fashion and rap go hand in hand and i have such a love for rap for rap music even before i was making music i would always talk and about it and you know i had a channel back in the day it didn't really do well but <laughs> i would talk about rap music and stuff like all the shit's deleted now but like you know i always had a love for you can even see bro like literally in my room like straight up like oh shit Wait. Straight up, like literally, I got like Travis Scott posters and shit. I got OVO bags and like yeah. fucking all that shit. So like, I've been I've been with this shit since like a kid, like just like the song since a kid. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I've always I've always had that. You know, like I've always wanted to go, you know, tour the world, and I've always wanted to, you know, show people on stage like what I got. And you know, it's happy that I can do that. And I know it sucks because of COVID, but you know, I'm promising everybody, man. There's gonna be tons of shows after this COVID. Tons. Tons of shows. Tons of. Tons. Shows. Tons, bro. NK, he's booking them first class, bro. Like, NK, <laughs> he's my manager, too, so, like, he's a lot to think about that. He, honestly, he's giving me a lot of confidence to kind of actually, like, open up more and, like, you know, show myself more. Because I was always before, like, I was always in, like, kind of a small, like, small bubble with my group. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, we were known a lot in, like, White Rock and stuff, but we were always kind of, like, you know, we were always kind of inside people deep down. Yeah. But, like... And I, like out of the group, I would say like me and like my boy Zay Matt, uh, shout out Matt Thomas. Yeah, he, like we're like the loudest ones. We're always like the ones that are, like you know, repping the shit, you know, going crazy. Like yeah, SK this, SK that. Like <laughs> back then, we would we would go to parties. We would literally like a girl would help, uh, hit me up and she'd be like, "Oh, you'll come to my party, like invite people." I'll pull up. There's only like ten people there. I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" I put on my story. Not even an hour, not even like 10 o'clock rolls by. There's fucking the whole place, 50, 60 people. Shit. End of the night, she caps out at like fucking 120, 120 guests. Boom. Damn. I used to be that guy, bro. Like, Body's I still am. But, like, that up. but I, I, like, I would be that guy that always like did that. And I would also go to shows and shit. And I would always end up meeting all the artists for free. Like, bro, like I met like Skepta, Cardi twice. Bro. I had to pay the first time. But I met Cardi for free after that. Like, with Cardi. Uh, whole lot red. That shit grew on to me too. By the way, did you, yeah. did you end up hearing that? I've tuned into pieces of it. I just it's Cardi is a mm-hmm. guy that you gotta like really take time to get adjusted to the sound, and it's just like I know I would I would like it and would appreciate it. I just haven't given it the time to like really like figure out figure it out. Yeah, well, me and my boys, yeah, we were like, we were bumping that shit back when like kids would be like, "Who is this?" Like they would think it's like poop music because it was on SoundCloud. Because we're at the beginning of SoundCloud where it didn't really get a good like look. People just thought it was just like, oh, it's just like guys that are trying to be famous going on there, you know? Yeah. But, like, and then it, until it grew into his own thing, but like, yeah, we were on all that shit before that. Like we loved ASAP, you know, before they were fucking arena big. Like we were all into all yeah. that shit, and that's another reason why I like fashion too. I would say uh asap rocky like i'm not really i don't really like his new stuff i feel like he was way better back in like 2012 2013 like 2014 asap but like hit like when he his old fits you know how he would you know got the sweatpants and like you know the hoodies and you know he mixed the margella with the rick you yeah. know like i like that type of stuff though know? that's, tight. Thought, that's like, tight. He's, he's, not, he's a fashion icon as well super into i and, know and I, I appreciate rock he's like one of my favorites he's like one of my style uh-huh. icons like him jaden smith or like two of my my as far as rap goes my like no one, no, one beat, no one beats no one beats yato no one beats yeah i know yay's crazy i know yay's crazy but the fashion game like i know with the shoes like he has some weird shoes but like honestly like he knows how like from back in the day like when he was wearing like polo like ralph Lauren, like 
how he put outfits together back then was like crazy, honestly. And he was like the first, like, like that, like that's another, uh, I guess what, like what kind of got me, if you're asking what kind of got me into music, rap music in the first place was my uncle Reza. Shout out to uncle Reza, man. I love you. But like, he was the first one. He showed me college dropout. Like when that shit was like new, 2005, I was like, like, I didn't understand what the guy was talking about or anything. I was like six years old. Right. Yeah. But like I loved it. I just loved how he like you know he added the jazz aspect. And, like knowing that he produced almost every song on it was like you know it was crazy. That's tight. Was crazy that's to tight. me. And, that, and that, that's what I had, that's what I was after, after that after college rap. I was like I want to know everything about rap before this. And then my uncle showed me you know like the Easy E's, Tupac, Dr. Dre, all that shit. And then, Damn. Yeah. You know? And I grew up, that. and then I grew up, and I just started growing up with the wave. So like I literally like like back even when like fucking. Uh, graduation came out like I was hype about that day one and I was in like grade fucking three like you know what I mean like I was that kid like for real that's super cool to hear that like you ain't just like one of those SoundCloud because mm-hmm. like I'm not a kid type of someone that you just like hop on rap music like I actually have a passion for it yeah you know what I mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that's dope to hear that like it's it's so much deeper than the auto tune. It, it, yeah, you know it, what I mean. Yeah, it's so much deeper. And obviously, with so projects much. coming, like obviously, it's gonna be a lot more instrumental. But obviously, for the time, like, this 2020 man, it was sad. Like, I just felt like with Beach Town, I feel like I needed to like you know get everybody pumped again. Everybody, yeah, you know, start you know while they're partying. At least you know you got a rage, you got a rage at home. You know, party get to keep the vibes coming. You know, awesome. even that's our time. Well, we're just gonna fly straight into our third question: the five W's, which is our where. And I know you rep your town. A lot, like it's the title. A it's lot. on. It's featured in the title of two of. I rep Vancouver as well too. I was born in Vancouver. Yeah, but yeah, like I rep both, obviously. But like, yeah, Beach Town's Beach Town's a part of me, obviously, because that's where I really grew up and learned a lot about yeah. myself. So, where would you live if not Beach Town? Oh me? Yeah. Oh, I wanna like I, I'm not a person that like obviously well, like I'm old old like you know 35 plus trying to have kids and shit. Like obviously I would like find a place like. I probably honestly raise my kids here, honestly. Tight. But like, but like before that, obviously I want to have a life where I travel and stuff. Like, obviously I want to stay in places like you know New York and like I want to like stay in California. Like, I like to like go to places and check them out and stay there for a little bit, yeah, a couple months, check it out, see if I can like you know have a life here fully. Mm-hmm. You know, I I feel like I haven't traveled enough to really know that. To be age. Respect, respect. Yeah, that's yeah. tight. Hopefully, hopefully, bigger. music comes back and that that becomes a possibility again. One hundred percent, yeah. Traveling for work is always the best way to do it. For sure, for sure, man. Just gotta keep, gotta keep the mission going, man. Gotta <laughs> keep the mission going. Never stop. Awesome. Well, we're just gonna go straight into our fourth question: the five W's, which is our when. And uh, you are about to throw an event right before COVID hit. And uh, so when will Beach Town Takeover be coming back? Okay, yes. So actually, I'm, we're actually in the works. This is cool. I can, I can announce this on here. So I'm happy. Sick. We're in the works of planning, and I want you to be there so you can film uh, film the stuff happening. But we're thinking about doing a virtual one in 2021. Tight. And I'm thinking about adding like way more artists. like Because of the live, I remember the one that we were planning only had like seven artists. Yeah. And then uh, now I'm thinking about like just you know putting like even double like putting like maybe even like even like not a whole double probably like 12, 10, 10 to twelve and uh, and just basically do like a live stream show for this year. But obviously, yeah, when COVID's done, we're gonna do annual beast town takeovers and they're gonna be fun too. Oh, be annual! Cheap too, that's so it'll be sick. just it's just somewhere to bring the kids, let the kids you know rage, let the kids vibe, have a safe place to you know party and listen to good local music for you know four or five hours. But like that's what it is. That's tight. I respect that shit. Like, as someone that comes from, and I don't play with the lineups either. I'm gonna put people that I that I believe that will, you know, do something in the city. Like, I'm not gonna just throw somebody on just to, you know get some money from them to invest. Like, I ain't, I ain't with that. I'm I'm about I'm about you know being professional and about yeah. pulling about off a good show because I take I take prefer performance seriously. You saw me in a lot of best. I oh, I understand. Yeah. Blew me away. It was like your first time I ever saw you. Yeah, I know, bro. And you just were like... Energy is key. I'm not playing around. To all the youngins that are going to watch this, that are, you know, wanting to do shows after COVID, energy is key. Without energy, people won't feel you. You need need people to feel you in the crowd, and then they're going to keep watching, they're going to put their lights up, and then they're going to follow you after the show and keep listening, and that's how you grow. 100%. Yeah, because I remember... 
like you were you were popping then like like I didn't really caught on to like your wave at all but then I remember when you pulled up I remember hearing like the guys that organized it talking like just between them you're like you gotta get SK on now you gotta get him on now and he's like they were like why what's going on he's like he brought like 50 people we gotta go <laughs> I know the whole, we, we got that shit crazy I know and then do you remember the fight at the show uh, I was inside at that point, but I do. There's like cops and shit outside, and then like some people went outside, and then there was no music for like literally like, five minutes. And I'm like, what the fuck, let me go on. And then I go on, and everybody runs inside, everybody just keeps going, and I'm like, get the fuck in here. And I play fitted, and everybody goes, ah. Oh, it was that's crazy. That was an insane. That place, it got packed for that, for that, for that part. Me and Eli said it got Packed. No, that's super packed. It, it went, it got really hectic yeah. as the night went on. Like, I think a dude almost got shot at like the end of the night. Like, like that's certain for you, bro. That's it ended certain. at like two a.m. and like two guys were just like drunk as fuck outside, like the establishment, and they were just like not having a good time. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna stay inside because I wasn't hours. on yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was like two a.m. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, this was like the end. It was, uh, it was fucked. Awesome. Yeah. It felt like we headlined it, even though Baby Fresh did. Shout out to him. <laughs> it, it, it felt like it, because we, we left right after, unfortunately, because, like, my ride was like, no, if you want to ride, you got to go now. I'm like, shit. Like, I live on the other side of Surrey, so I'm like, fuck, 30 minutes? Mm-hmm. I got to take this ride. Like, 2 a.m.? <laughs> yeah. I didn't get out of there until super late. But, yeah, awesome. We're just going to jump into our fifth and final question, the five W's, which is our why. And, uh... I've, uh, I, I, through doing some research on your shit and like you always describe yourself in a very particular way and I just want to know, why did you choose the genre of hip hop rage music slash I, melodic R&B? But the rage aspect is the more point I'm more interested in because it's not a term that most people adopt so prominently. Well, as you can see, one of my uh, one of my favorites is Travis, but before that, something uh, my my closest friends know about me, and this is before before even Travis. Like I would listen to Kanye, like I said, mm-hmm. and Kanye co-signed Kid Cudi. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna shoot some. Shout out to Matt. Shout out to Matt Thomas. Shout out to Zay for giving me this. But this is my this is one of my favorite albums of all time. Man on the Moon too. This, this, this shit. Why I'm a rager. Yeah. This is literally why. This and rodeo are why I'm a rager. That's tight. And also, and also, like, literally, you gotta hear this album. You really gotta do. It. After this interview, man on the moon too, man. Honestly, the production I, I, on this shit, like, honestly, like, you can tell from Kid Cudi was doing this shit. This album came out in 2010, right? Yeah. People, are, people are doing the shit that he's doing on this now. Like, if you notice on, like, the new SoundCloud wave and shit, like, people are trying to get on this. Like, the TikTok kids, like, try to get on that, you know, like, that rockish, you know, like, that rage level, you know, intensity. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and he's also very spiritual. That's another reason why I like uh, Cuddy as well. He's very spiritual and he's very uh, humble. And that's that's one thing, you know, my parents raised me to be is very humble, you know. Mm-hmm. Know who you are and, you know, like. You know, there's always going to be somebody better than you. So you got to, you know, you got to be humble and obviously, you know, work hard, right? 100%. So that's what Cuddy preaches and, you know, that's what I preach too, so. <laughs> that's tight. That's tight. Yeah. yeah. Shout um, out to Kid Cuddy. Kid Cuddy gets mad respect, man. That, did, that man did so much for the game that I don't think anyone will really ever fully realize. He's, he's just done so much incredible work. And, like, yeah. his last album that he dropped was, like, that, like, that was such it's such a vibe. I've listened to it so many times. It, it flows really well. Like he does like the deeper songs later, but he gets the rage part like in the in the beginning. Like, oh fine. yeah, it's like I can just imagine it just going so off. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, ever since December, that's all I've been listening to. It's literally Man on the Moon three and like bit of, like whole lot of red a little bit. Yeah, mainly Man on the Moon three. That's tight. That's tight. I've I've. I mean, my my music repertoire goes very broad. This this mm-hmm. it literally nothing ever sticks. Uh, because I'm just always circling through new music and new artists and stuff. But Man on the Moon has come back quite a few times, and I, I do. It's one. It's one of my top albums of the year for sure. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Other than that, I would probably say like Limbo, probably gets number one for me. Oh yeah, Limbo is good too. Limbo, yeah. Yeah, that's. I don't. Know, I just. It's my shit. I've listened to that so many times. It's like no matter when, it's Limbo time, and I'm just like, I'm down. 
Do you like Polo G? Polo G? Uh, I like tracks, but as an artist, I'm not a huge fan. Mm. You didn't you, you didn't listen to The Goat that came out? Uh, not really. I actually enjoyed that album. I didn't like his first album. Mm-hmm. Like I remember I only liked two songs, and I watched my winter break when he only had that first tape. Yeah. Guy Legend. And I literally, me and my buddy Cecil, we literally watched just those two songs. They're like, all right, let's get out of here. Like we, were, like, we were done after that. But then when he dropped The Goat, I'm like, this guy, like, I know he was trying to clean up his image. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's a good album. Like, he was actually talking about some really, you learn a lot from him. Yeah. From that album that you didn't learn from Dia Legend. Dia Legend was more like on some Chirac street shit. Yeah. And all that. And then this new Goat album is more about him, you know, learning to be a man and just like, you know, you know growing. Which that's why I like, that's why I like Polo G, like his cousin's the last album. If he didn't make the Goat, then I'd probably think he's okay, you know? Yeah. But he's like, so, but like, it's, it's, yeah, you should really check out the Goat, honestly. I feel like you, you would appreciate him more as an artist if you hear that album. I bet, yeah, because, like, that was, like, honestly, I kind of just dismissed it. It was, like, Polo G, he's, like, one of those dudes that's just on, like, the Hot 100, just, like, he's just, like, a popular, it's, like, I was assumed he was just, like, Little Nas X, just, like, he's just... That's what I thought at first, too, yeah. I was, like, I I don't need to listen to this, like, I got better things to do. Yeah, but, yeah, the goat surprised me, honestly, yeah. Yes, I should go back and uh, give that one a second listen. Mm Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sitting down and chatting I with us today. Too, man. Honestly, I'm, it's, it's I'm been, happy to be here, man. I'll do another one with you anytime, bro. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's always such a good time just hanging out, chatting about music, chatting about what everyone's up to. It's it's it, This has become my favorite show by far to ever make. It's just such a chill and enjoyable time. And it's going to be the biggest episode, man. Just watch <laughs> on the ground. It's going to be the biggest episode. Biggest episode oh, to date. White Russian SK. We're going for gold. Uh, SK, hey. do you got anything else that you want to plug or you want to share out to these uh, your audience here? What what do you want to what do you want the people to know? I want the people to know to be safe, stay indoors, wear, use hand sanitizer, wash your fucking hands. I say that with nice, I say that nicely but strictly. Yeah. Uh, and go stream V Sound Icon, man. My next shit's gonna be better. I know. But you gotta stream this right now, cause you know I'm gonna keep growing, and I promise you this this next album that's gonna come out. I don't know when's gonna come out. Yeah. I'm, I'm going double, triple as hard as I did with Beach Town Icon. It's gonna be lit, and I love it. Each and every one of y'all for watching and support. Love y'all, seriously. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been the Five W's Interview Show. My name is Reese Setter. This has been our guest, White Russian SK, and I will see you in the next one.